What is going on, Machinima fans? My name is Trinkill, and welcome back to my Borderlands 2 skill tree analysis series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Axton the Commando, or as Randy Pitchford himself has dubbed him, Soldier 2.0. And as we get into some of the skill trees, you're going to see exactly why he's called him that. Now, real quick, I am feeling a little sick, so if I sound a little nasally or my throat sounds scratchy, let me go ahead and apologize for that. I swear to God, I, I, I get sick way more often than anybody I've ever met in my life. But regardless, let's get beyond that and talk about a little disclaimer. As I've said in the first two videos, if you're watching this after Borderlands 2 has come out, understand that I created this series before the game actually launched. So this is me with no hands-on experience with Borderlands 2 itself, actually kind of just speculating on some preliminary build ideas using the information I've read on the internet, some of the videos that I've watched, and my original experience with the uh, Borderlands 1, or I guess the original Borderlands. So regardless, moving beyond all that, let's go ahead and actually get into some of the skill trees here. First off, his Saber Turret. This is why he's called Soldier 2.0. The original command, or the original commando, the original soldier, Roland, had a Scorpio turret. Now, real quick, before we talk about the Saber turret, let's talk about the Scorpio turret and what a horrible, just, cluster fuck that was. The Scorpio turret was by far the worst action skill in the game, and I, I'm a Roland fan too, so hopefully I don't offend any of you Roland fans, but the Scorpio turret was dookie in comparison to the other three action skills for two reasons. One, it was not an oh shit button. It wouldn't save your life if you threw it down right at the last second, and two, it's the only action skill that could not be cancelled early. All of the other three action skills could be cancelled early so that you could restart their cooldown. So then you had the oh shit buttons. You had Lilith, who could be invulnerable and invisible and heal herself and all kinds of crazy stuff. You had Brick, who went insane and started punching things and took reduced damage and also healed himself. You had Mordecai, who had Bloodwing, who he could throw out, would kill like six guys and heal him to completion. And also Bloodwing was the only action skill that could persist into fight for your life mode and actually revive you. So Roland kind of got a big old shaft in the first Borderlands, if you ask me. And I think that Gearbox kind of realized that. And they were like, all right, so if we're going to make another turret, we got to make this one badass. And they did a damn good job of it. So the Saber Turret, you deploy a Saber Turret that automatically fires at enemies. The cool thing about this one, the upgrade, when you're near the Saber Turret, you can reclaim it. So that's good. You can cancel it and start your cooldown over. However, you also refund some of your cooldown. So if you cancel it early, the earlier you cancel it, the more cooldown you're going to refund. So that is awesome. Thank you, Gearbox. I love you guys to death now. So let's go ahead and take our Saber Turret. And as you see, that the Saber Turret's already much better, but it's going to get even better as we get into all three of the trees. All three of the trees have at least a minimum of two things that are going to greatly affect your Saber Turret. So anyway, let's move into the Gorilla Tree. The Gorilla Tree is more of the Turret Tree. The Gunpowder Tree is more of his Gun Damage Tree. And the Survival Tree is more of his Defensive Type Tree. I don't know how you're going to play. I'm probably going to play more of a survival with a secondary complementary bit of gunpowder. Maybe even with a couple things in Gorilla. I haven't really decided just yet. But uh, I always was more of a defensive soldier. I had a buddy that was the exact opposite. He was a turret soldier that had a little bit into gunpowder with no defense. So we played, uh, we played a dual soldier playthrough and we actually did uh, pretty damn good if you ask me. Anyway, regardless, let's go ahead and take a look at the Gorilla Tree. Assuming that we're going to try to make our turret as badass as possible, we're going to take all of the turret abilities in this one. And we've got Sentry here, right off the bat. Shots fired per burst, plus one. Turret duration, plus two, per point. So you go up to a turret duration of ten extra seconds, and you get each burst fires five more bullets. Right off the bat, the first five points. That is awesome. The other complementary ability to this one is ready increases your reload speed. That's not great. Uh, well, it, it's great. It's good. Don't get me wrong. But it's not great when we're looking at a turret tree. Now, on the other hand, if you were going, say, gunpowder, you may want to save 15 points to put in gorilla for the first three abilities here, which we'll get into here in a second. So this is going to increase your reload speed. That's good. Not as good as the sentry if we're going to go straight turret build, though. Then we've got Laser Sight, increases the accuracy of your Saber Turret. Obviously, it says Saber Turret in it, so we're going to take it. The other one is Willing, increases your Shield Recharge Rate and Shield Recharge Delay. This one is amazing. It's going to take your Recharge Rate plus 75%, and your Delay is going to go down by 60%. That is great. This is, I can't, I can't fathom, I, I have, a, like I said in my first couple videos, I have a huge love for Shields and the Recharge Rate and Recharge Delay. So, this one... 
It seems like a no-brainer to me. If you're going to go any other tree than the Gorilla Tree, I would definitely take Willing. I'm going to go ahead and reset this, though, because we want a pure-on turret build. Let's go ahead and throw these points in here. Then we've got Onslaughts, a kill skill. Killing an enemy increases your gun damage and movement speed for a short time. And then we've got Able. Damaging an enemy causes you to regenerate health for a few seconds. The effect does not stack multiple times. So basically, for 3 seconds, you heal 2% of your health per second. So 6% of your health over 3 seconds. Um, that's not a lot of health, but every 3 seconds, assuming you're killing stuff, this is going... Oh, this is just damaging an enemy too, by the way. So just damaging an enemy is going to cause you to regenerate health. So it's a lot better than I originally had thought because I'm just assuming, like all the other health stuff, it is a kill skill. It is not. When you damage an enemy, you're going to start healing your health. So you're going to be constantly damaging enemies, so that's actually a pretty good skill. So like I said, these first three skills here could be complementary to any other build if you have the points to save for the Gorilla Tree. But regardless, we're obviously going to take Scorch Earth. Adds multiple rocket pods to your Saber Turret. Now I have no idea how good this is, but 22 rockets per volley? That sounds like a lot. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take... Uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, gun damage and movement speed. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a little more helpful in a full-on gorilla build than I think healing will be. You may come back later in the tree and grab these. I don't know. Then we've got grenadier. Now this is where it gets kind of fishy. This is going to add five extra grenades to your total grenade capacity. Do you want to be a full-on grenadier? I doubt it. I mean, six grenades at the end of the game is usually enough. Um, this is going to give you 11 grenades? Woo! That's a lot of grenades. So this may be overkill. I don't know. If you have a if you have a class mod that's going to add points to Grenadier, you're going to put one point in it so you at least get the benefits of your class mod. Uh, then we've got Crisis Management. You gain bonus gun damage and melee damage while your shields are depleted. This is one of those things where you got to wait for your shields to be depleted before it's going to benefit you. So instead of Grenadier and Crisis Management, I may go back up and grab Able and Willing. Willing and able, haha, <laughs> get that. And then uh, it's ready, willing and able too. That's that's really neat. I never noticed that until I just now. Uh, then we've got the uh, double up. Adds a second gun to your saber turret and changes both guns to fire slag bullets. Slagged enemies also obviously take bonus damage from all non-slag attacks. That's something that I forgot to mention when I talked about slag in the Maya video. And actually, while we're talking about slag, let me go ahead and uh, clear something up. When I said that slag was replacing L uh, explosion, I didn't mean that it was replacing it in the game. That, that explosion was no longer in the game. Obviously, you've got grenades and rockets. There are explosions in the game. What I meant was that this is an official element. S explosion was never really an element because it didn't do anything but add bonus damage. Now we've got slag that's actually a fourth element that's going to do something over time like the other three elements did. So Explosion is still in the game. I'm assuming it's still going to be a bullet type or a damage type on a gun as well, but it is not an element anymore. It's just, it never really was an element, so I guess I was kind of confusing when I said that. So I didn't mean that Explosion was not in the game anymore. I meant that it's replacing, uh, Slag is replacing it as an official actual element now. So regardless, let's move beyond that. So we can already see that this is a badass uh, tree. It's really going to beef up your turret. However, I'm going to be honest, for a turret tree, I don't think it does enough. I think you can get enough out of uh, ten, 11 points in this to make this tree completely useless. Basically, with Sentry, Laser Sight, and Scorched Earth, this tree is, after that, I mean, yeah, you get a second, you get a second gun on it, but would you rather have a second gun or you know, well, we'll talk about some of the stuff in the other tree. You, you'll get my point when we go through this other stuff, because the other stuff buffs your turret as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and reset that. Let's go ahead and jump into the gunpowder tree. We've got, uh, this is, this is mainly focused on your guns, so gun damage, your reload, magazine size, things like that. We've got impact increases gun damage and melee damage. We've got expertise increases your weapon speed, or your weapon swap speed, sorry, and your aim speed. Also, your movement speed is increased while aiming. So that's going to give you a little more mobility and a little more versatility, whereas this is going to give you more damage. If I'm going full on guns, I don't know, the expertise might be the way to go. Weapon swap speed plus 70%, aim speed plus 70%, and movement speed plus 35%. So you got to decide, do you want to be the quick guy that's going to shoot people with, uh, you know, like a quick gun? Or do you want to be the slow guy that's going to do more damage? You know what I mean? So you got to make that call. I'm always for speed, stealth, and range. So I'm going to go ahead and go with expertise. Then we've got Overload. Increases magazine size with assault rifles. If you're going to go with assault rifles, this is going to be massive because it's going to increase your magazine size by 50%. So, 
Otherwise, you've got Metal Storm. It's a kill skill. Killing an enemy dramatically increases your fire rate and reduces recoil for a short period of time. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset because I'm going to definitely take Metal Storm. 5 out of 5 in that, my fire rate's increased by 60% and my recoil reduction is reduced by 75%. Holy crap. And assuming that you are playing, if you're good at the game, especially if you're playing solo, Metal Storm is going to be up non-stop. So you're constantly going to have an increased fire rate and recoil reduce. So I really like this. And if you're using assault rifles, you may want to come back and even grab impact and overload for that extra gun damage and magazine size. Then we've got Steady, we've got Battlefront, and we've got Longbow Turret. I'm going to read Longbow Turret last. Hopefully you guys already know what that does. Steady reduces recoil with all weapon types and increases grenade damage and rocket damage. Then we've got Battlefront. While your Saber turret is deployed, you're, you deal increased damage. I'm definitely going to take Battlefront because you get up to 30% gun, melee, and grenade damage. That's crazy. And assuming that we can have our turret out quite often, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of damage while it's out. So I'm going to go ahead and take four points out of that. The Steady, again, depends on if you want to go straight gun. I'm trying to go a little more utility in this build. If you want to go straight gun, we would obviously have gone down this row instead of this one. But then I'm going to grab a longbow turret. This is where what I'm talking about with this kind of makes some of this over here a little bit irrelevant. But the uh, longbow turret, your saber turret can be deployed using longbow technology, allowing you to deploy it much further away. If you ever guys, if you guys ever used a longbow grenade, you aim at something, you throw your grenade and it goes pew and shoots across and hits exactly where you aimed it in a straight line. That's what this does. So now you can aim at the ground way away from you, deploy your turret, and kind of create a pincer between you and your turret. Now are both shooting at the enemies from opposite sides. So that's a really, really neat skill. Also increases the health of your saber turret by 110%, and your turret deploy range is plus 10,000%. I don't, I don't know how they calculate that. I'm sure it's just a joke, but um, you can now deploy your turret away from you instead of just kind of flaccidly plopping it down on the ground in front of you. Uh, anyway, we get into row four. Duty calls. That's a uh, Call of Duty joke, I'm assuming. Increases the damage and fire rate of non-elemental guns. So, if you don't have an element on your gun, your damage and fire rate's going to increase. That's obviously pretty good. We got one point here in Do or Die. Now, this is one of those defeatist perks that only works in your Fight for Your Life mode, but it also increases your grenade and rocket launcher damage completely. So if you're going to if you're going to go with the uh, rocket build, which is not very common I guess on a on a soldier, uh, you could take steady and you could take do or die. That's going to increase your rocket launcher damage by 20% there and 10% here, plus your grenades. I mean, you could go out and all explosive build. I just don't think that's necessarily all that worth it. But I'm going to grab do or die cuz it's only one point. That's that's enough for me to invest into being able to throw grenades while I'm in fight for your life mode. So um, beyond that, now you got a choice. Now you can go back and get any one of these original things that we skipped. So whichever is more important to you, I guess you could grab here. Um, you could grab increased damage and fire rate of non-elemental guns. I personally am probably going to go with the increased gun damage and melee damage total. That's going to give me 20 points in gun damage, 15 points in melee damage. I really like that one over duty calls. Then we've got Ranger. This is an interesting ability. I don't know if I like it or not just yet. But your gun damage, accuracy, critical hit damage, fire rate, magazine size, reload speed, and maximum health are all increased by 5 if you put 5 points into it. That's crazy. Especially if there is a class mod that also adds to Ranger. If so, Ranger's going to be really good because if you get plus 3 points in Ranger, now you've got a bonus 8% on everything. That's pretty damn good. Then the last one, the big one of this, of this gunpowder tree, Nuke. Deploying your turret sets off a small nuclear blast. Thank God we've got longbow technology. So now you're going to shoot your longbow into a group of enemies and a nuke is going to explode. I haven't seen any video on that. I'm assuming when they say nuke, it's not just going to be some like grenade explosion. It's going to be massive. So we can only hope that the nuke is going to be humongous. I guess I should hover my, my thing over nuke. Uh, so... I don't know how that's going to work. It may be great, it may not be. But you can see with Longbow and the Nuke how the kind of the stuff over here doesn't seem so amazing anymore. So if you're going to go a Nuke build, you may grab Nuke, you may come over here and grab Sentry, you may come over here and grab Laser Sight and grab Scorched Earth. Your turret is still badass without having to go down and get Double Up. Double Up's really the only other thing in this gorilla tree that adds to your turret. So I don't know, maybe I shouldn't call this the turret tree because it's really... There's only three skills that affect your turret. 
and the other ones have just as many skills that affect the turret. So, I don't know. I don't know. The sentry and the laser sight is why I originally called it the turret tree, because those were in the original turret tree that uh, Roland had. So anyway, regardless, let's go ahead and move into the survival tree. This is my favorite tree for a reason, because I like a defensive soldier, or now a defensive commando. We've got healthy and preparation. Now, healthy increases your maximum health. Preparation increases your shield capacity. Also, when your shield is full, you regenerate health. I like both of these. I would like preparation better if healthy didn't increase your maximum health by 30%. That is a big boost. So I don't know. You only regenerate 2% of your health per second while your shields are... Shields. Oh, yeah. I went a little Asian on you. Sorry about that. A little Asian joke. I am so racist. Uh, anyway... Uh, your shield capacity, or your shield only regenerates 2% of your health per second while it's full. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and take healthy. I guess I may come back and get this later. We'll have to find out how it actually plays out. The next row is interesting. We've got pressure, improves your reload speed, and shield recharge delay based on how much health you have. The lower your health, the higher the bonuses. I already like this. I'm already going to take it just because I already know what the other one is. And I really, really like that reduction in shield recharge delay. If you take pressure and you take willing, holy crap, your shields are going to be constantly up. That is insane to me. So anyway, regardless, the other one is called last ditch effort. This is another one of those defeatist perks that I really don't like because you don't get any benefit from it until you're in fight for your life mode. However, it does talk about a new mechanic. Let's read this. Increases your gun damage and movement speed while in fight for your life mode. Movement speed? Wait a minute. So if you guys haven't watched the hour-long uh, thing with Randy Pitchford where he's uh, talking about the game where they have an hour-long gameplay episode, movement is now... You're, well, let me, let me rephrase that. You're now able to move in fight for your life mode, which is something you could not do in the original Borderlands. So when you die, when you're crippled, you have this, like crawling animation where you can kind of move out from how many times in borderlands have you been shooting at a psycho and he kills you and then as soon as you go down he runs away towards your friend that's that's very very frustrating but now if you have one of those guys that just happens to walk past a wall or behind a barrel and you can't get a shot on him now you can kind of crawl to help yourself maybe get a second wind the cool thing about this is your movement speed is increased by 70 percent when you put five points into it so while it is kind of a defeatist perk, you have to you, you can only use it when you go down into fight for your life mode. Increasing your movement speed by 70%, that may be fast enough for me to take this because you may almost be like you're not dying, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. We'll have to see how fast that actually is when the game launches, but it's a neat idea regardless. Then we get down into quick charge, phalanx shield, and forbearance. Forbearance reduces the duration of your status effects on you. Burned, corroded, electrocuted, and slagged. Notice it does not say explosion because all of explosives damage is done up front. Also increases maximum health. So your maximum health is going to be increased by 5% and you get a duration decrease of 40% on all status effects that affect you. Well, that's pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to take it. Quick charge is going to give me a kill skill. Killing an enemy causes your shield to quickly regenerate for a short time. Uh, let's see. Regenerates 5% of your shield's capacity per second. If this is a normal kill skill, it's going to last for about 6 seconds, giving you 30% shield capacity per, or per kill skill, per quick charge. See what I'm saying? So, if that's the case, if you're going to be killing a lot of people, you're going to get a 30% shield capacity per 6 seconds, and quick charge is going to constantly be up. I really like this one. I'm a shield buff, so I like, I like all the things that add to your shields. Then we've got Phalanx Shield. Your shield, or your saber turret, projects a protective shield. This shield attempts to block enemy ranged attacks, but lets friendly ranged attacks pass through. Enemy movement and melee attacks are not affected. So your turret is going to have a shield now. That's obviously good. Um, if we get down to the next row, this is another interesting one. Increases your cooldown rate on your saber turret action skill. Skill. <laughs> so your cooldown is going to uh, be 25% faster, which is also really good. Then we've got Maglock. Your Saber Turret can be deployed on walls and ceilings. What? That's insane. So, uh, you may, if you're gonna go with Turret Build, I don't know, can you get all of these? We'll have to see. I don't know if you can reach all of them. We'll have to see here in just a second. Then we've got Grit. You gain a chance to ignore damage that would otherwise kill you. Oh, otherwise kill you. Sorry, I thought it was gonna continue. And in addition to not taking damage from the attack, you will regenerate half of your maximum health. So you have a... 
20% chance of ignoring death. So one in five times that you go into fight for your life mode, you won't, and you'll actually recover 50% of your health. That's kind of neat. I don't know if I'll end up taking it. Uh, I may prefer the last-ditch effort over that because that's only got a 20% chance to work, where this is going to work every time in fight for your life. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Then we've got Gemini. Allows you to deploy two saber turrets. That is just insane. Sometimes one just isn't enough. Ain't that right? So let's let's do a test here. Now that we've gone through all the trees, can you just really pimp your turret out? Let's save as many points as we can. So we got four there. Or, uh, put four there. We'll get, get maglock. Uh, let's go ahead and do the cooldown to get down to... Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Let's see. We've got Gemini there. We've got 19 points remaining. It's going to take... 10, yeah, we got one here. We're going to miss it by just a little bit. But, I mean, you could really pimp out your turret and understand that if we get a survival uh, survival thing, a survival uh, <laughs> class mod, if we get a survival class mod, we may be able to reduce some of the points. If we can gain three more points, we can get longbow, shields, maglock, and multiple rocket pods, plus buffing our turret here and having turret cooldown, we could get a pimp-ass turret, plus the fact that we could deploy two of them. That may be an interesting style of a build if you want to go full-on turret build. So basically what I would do if I was doing that, I would grab uh, shield capacity and regen, I would grab pressure, I would grab quick charge, put four points in here, just so I could grab phalanx shield, then I would grab maglock, I would go into my uh, cooldown, get five there. What else would be good in this one? Uh, go ahead and put a couple in health, probably, until we can get that one point in Gemini. So we're going to be as defensive shield-wise and health-wise as possible in the survival tree. Then I would probably I would probably come down in expertise to get to longbow. Going to go down into metal storm as well to grab longbow here. Then I would come down in the health ones and the shield, and then try to get two extra points in Willing and one in the, enough for one in Scorched Earth, that would give us as defensive and as turret buildy as we could be. If you didn't want to go into the defensive part of Gorilla, you could come over into the turret part of Gorilla just to increase your turret. So, I don't know, that seems like it would be a really good build. build. How I'm going to play is, I'm going to go probably... A little bit into a healthy or shield regen. I'm not exactly sure which. Grab pressure. Grab phalanx shield. Uh, I'm going to grab quick charge. Get to uh, mag lock. Then I'm going to grab my 5 out of 5 in my turret. And I'm also going to put enough to get down into my Gemini here. Then I'm going to come over into the expertise tree probably. And I'm going to grab some... Uh, well, I may go... Man, I don't know. I may have to go turret. Because that is just too tempting with the 10 points there to pimp out your turret. But ready, willing, and able also is very defensive. I'm not exactly sure how I would play, but you could do, if you went survival and then went a little bit into gunpowder to get the longbow, I don't know, the, the sentry damage seems a little more important to me. Plus, I have access to ready, willing, and able. You could put a couple points into each of those to kind of get the benefits from them. Uh, I don't know. You could play around with this build. You could do a lot of things. It's going to be, this is going to be the most interesting character to kind of play around with to see what style of turret do you actually want? Are the shields more important to you, or is longbow more important to you, or is rockets? Or is a second gun more important than a nuke, or is two more important than both? I don't know. That's going to be a lot of fun to kind of play with. So anyway guys, hopefully you guys understand a little bit more about Axton the Commando. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions or comments, leave that stuff in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. If you can't get a hold of me here, please do me the favor to go check out my channel over at TrendKillV01. And uh, if you like what you see over there, please subscribe to me. I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, guys, we've only got one more episode left. We've got the Gunzerker to talk about, the face of Borderlands 2, if you will. And until we do that one, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me, guys. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.